The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to a new season of Edible Bean School. For our first episode, we're going to take a look back at last year and, you know, what we learned about growing edibles in 2022. In Manitoba, a good crop prevailed after a wet spring delayed planting, and in Ontario, dry conditions stressed that crop, but growers did manage average yields. Um, We'll talk more about Ontario later when we're joined by Wade Bickle from Hensel Co-op, but first... We'll kick things off in the West with some insights from Manitoba Agricultural Pulse specialist, Dennis Lang. Hi, Dennis. Hey, thanks for joining me. Always great to have you on the Edible Bean School. Yeah, no, I appreciate you inviting me here today. Hey, I see you're, you are dressed for spring and ready to go. Well, this is this is a nice, bright, sunny day today, so I thought I'd bring a bright, nice, uh, a nice pink shirt out today. So. Oh. Hey, so but before we get there, hey, let's have a quick look back at uh, 2022. You know, it was a tough start, but you had some. You had to be pretty pleased with how it turned out. Yeah, back in spring, um, everything was delayed in Manitoba. Um, just the entire season was set back. It wasn't a matter of that we started and quit. It was a matter of we couldn't really get going. So once we did start to see dry bean acres planted, uh, I think everybody expected a bit of a drop, and that's uh, that's what we did see. We saw about 115,000 acres planted. Um, but the benefit there, I guess, with that maybe that little bit later planting was the beans came out of the ground a lot quicker. They went into a little warmer soil. They came out a lot quicker. Um, as the season progressed, um, we had good growing conditions almost over most of the dry bean region and uh, came out with some really fantastic yields actually breaking records in uh, in most bean classes in Manitoba and overall average were just over uh, uh, almost 2300 pounds an acre so that was that was pretty amazing actually to see that so yeah well you, you never know what's going to happen right you plant the crop hey one thing um, you saw in 2022 was water hemp it's becoming a bigger issue and it's a weed that uh, you're telling bean growers that you know, they need to be aware of well, this past year, and we 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 have seen it before in Manitoba. A uh, provincial weed specialist, uh, Kim Brown Livingston, has been out this past year um, watching a number of fields uh, where they have found it, um, and it's been in you know the soybean fields is where we're initially finding it, right? But now what's happening is um, soybeans and dry beans are kind of you know interlink in some respects in in different areas. So what we're telling growers is uh, when you're out scouting in in the mid-August period and into September, if you see any weird weird and wonderful plants that uh, are don't look like a normal pigweed plant, uh, your best option is to go in there and pull those when those plants are are when you can see them. You got to dig them up. You can't just pull them out because if you just pull them, you'll break them off. But uh, you want to prevent that seed set. And uh, in the soybeans, it's been being uh, in some regions we're, we're seeing some pretty bad spots. Um, but for dry bean growers, it's the same kind of thing, because if we're looking at a September um, harvest and you have green weeds in the field, better off just going and picking those pants out of there and, and making sure they're not going to go to seed moving forward, because we want to try to keep this as bay, at bay as long as we can. Now, soybean cyst nematode, SCN, another pest on your radar, you know, um, you know, something that soybean growers always need to keep an eye out for, but they should also command, I guess, the attention of bean growers as well. Well, exactly. Um, in Manitoba, we've had uh, five confirmed uh, RMs where we have found uh, SCN. Um, back in uh, a couple of years ago, we found one field that was actually quite bad in soybeans, where you were actually seeing above ground symptoms and lots of cysts on the roots. And why that's a problem for dry bean growers is that this particular field had dry beans in the rotation. So dry beans provide a host year. Uh, In Minnesota, uh, they have had um, uh, kidney beans actually affected uh, yield uh, because of it. And uh, there are some dry bean uh, cultivars that are a lot more susceptible, especially in the kidney class. So what growers need to be aware of is if you're growing soybeans um, and you want to be incorporating SCN tolerant varieties into the soybeans. But if you're if you do decide to put dry beans on some of those same fields, 
um, you may want to space them out a little bit more because it does provide a carrier year and we don't want to end up problem uh, with problems in dry beans down the road. Hey, Dennis, I want to go back to that those yields and, and last year for a second. And, you know, um, maybe anything we can learn there? I mean, as you said, I mean, that late planting, you got that, that amazing season uh, and that emergence and and that that open end of the year anything to learn there or is it just the stars collided here i i would like i would like to say we did everything absolutely perfect this year but what i'm really going to say is that what we learned this year is that we really don't know um what the magic bullet is um things just happen to really align this year from you know beans coming out of the ground quickly to not a lot of stress through the growing season to timely rains and not a lot of extreme temperatures and no fall frost um you know compared to the year before when we were super dry um that's quite quite a dramatic change so i think what you need to move forward or i guess what you can take out of this is keep in mind that dry beans do like warm soil when you're planting um, that's going to give them a, a better start you want to get them in in a timely fashion this year the season was just shifted it wasn't the fact that you know we could have started may 1st it was the fact that you know may 1st we still had snow on the ground in some parts of manitoba so really starting in that may long weekend or after may long weekend get the beans in in the ground quickly and let the weather kind of do its thing. You know, that's the biggest thing. Uh, start off with a real healthy start, and that usually starts with a good quality seed. We now head east to Ontario, uh, where we're joined by Wade Bickle. He is the origination manager for Hensel Co-op. Hi, Wade. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Well, thanks for having me, Brian. Hey, now, Wade, in the opening, I noted that dry conditions in Ontario stressed the edible bean crop. Um, how did the season play out, and, and how did it impact yield? Yeah, we, we did have that dry, dry conditions, you know, from the end of May um, all the way through harvest in Ontario. And and uh, I think if you were talking to me the end of June, we would have said, oh, boy, you know, this is going to be a tough crop of beans. But uh, generally farmers that planted later that had a really good crop. It's it's quite surprising. Dry edible beans means that uh, I guess they can do without a bit of water. Um you know the other the other important thing to realize is that when you have that dry weather, you don't have the white mold pressure that we typically see in Ontario. Ontario's usually got pretty good uh, white mold pressure, and this year it wasn't uh, it wasn't much of a factor. Um, yeah, it was a it was a dry season. You know, it said some guys that planted uh, in later May and uh, got some cold rain and and that really kind of hurt their yields but it, that was uh, pretty much the exception yeah i mean you had some average yields and some above average yields too right oh yeah if you look at the uh, ontario yields from agricor anyways you look at black beans averaged uh, 2705 pounds per acre you know with oxford county um you know 3041 pounds per acre um in cranberries you know, cranberries have a, a, a short flowering period, and uh, you know if you, they didn't get to take advantage of that August rain, so they were they were at 2,407 pounds, nothing to sneeze at, but you know slightly below uh, the typical average. Kidney beans in Ontario, mostly dark reds, uh, mostly Dynasty seed, um, were 2,612 pounds per acre. Again, Oxford County. Um, with a whopping uh, 2,969 pounds per acre. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that dynasty variety really, really starting to shine. Now, rainfall was down in 2022, Wade, but acres were actually up. Yes, yeah. So if you look at the agricore numbers, uh, we're almost 9% higher uh, uh, acres in Ontario compared to 2021, which, which is a bit of a surprise for most of us. Uh, we thought, you know, with the higher corn and soybean values, that it, it, uh, dry bean acres would take a hit. Um, yeah, and moisture-wise, if you look at uh, Oxford County, I mentioned them a few times there earlier. You were, uh, you know, in Hickson, the recorded moisture was, uh, you know, 60% of normal from May 1st to August or October 15th. So it's uh, it was incredible. Hey, now, what's the management takeaway for growers, for, you know, from 2022, Wade? Um, you know, like Manitoba, can we learn anything about those uh, later planted beans and, and how we manage the crop? Yeah, I, I think uh, dry bean, edible dry bean growers are, they're the patient folks, right? So, um, and, and the best growers are the most patient. So those guys that planted, 
at the right time, instead of trying to push it a little earlier, we're rewarded this year. So it uh, it's not the same every year, but that seemed to be, you know, those guys that plant around the first week of June usually do the best. Mm. Final question for you, and that is, you know, um, about marketing. Um, you say one of the biggest watchouts for 2023 is for growers to make sure they have a home for their crops. What's happening? Well, all regions in North America in 2021 had a big crop of beans, and it was a surprise. Like, I think when you when you talk to Dennis, they had a record yield in Manitoba. The same can be said in North Dakota. Nobody had much hope for those guys, and there's there was a lot of beans in the market. And demand has kind of slid since the beginning of the pandemic when it was uh, it was a free for all for edible beans in in the marketplace. So demand's down, supplies are high. I, I you know growing spec beans might be a dangerous game in 2023. Right. Well, uh, we'll see what uh, transpires here. Wade, always great to have you on the Edible Bean School. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Bern. 